Mm -hmm. um, you know, you get to carry not only the mantle of a Disney heroine yes. now, but also really, get, again, Polynesian culture, you know, hasn't been you know, focused on that much in mm -hmm. films, and now you have this. How has the reception been back at home and from friends and stuff been, been with you? Yeah, it's been really, really great. Um, yes, this, this film is inspired by the Polynesian culture. Yeah. Uh, my friends and family, and even I was a bit wary before I started working on the film because before I started working on it, I thought, okay, Disney, making a film inspired by my culture. Slow your roll and make sure that you do this right. And thankfully, um, after being on this film and after realizing all the love that Disney has put into it, they've done such a wonderful job. And they have an oceanic story trust, which is made up of elders and storytellers and fishermen who created just this film, to, it made it so much more lifelike and it made it right, you know, it felt right. So my family and my friends at home, they've realized that and they're singing the songs. My young cousins are dressing up as Moana and, you know, they're singing the songs in the car. I was, I was home and uh, we were driving on like the freeway and then we had kind of just slowed down as traffic usually does and blasting from the car, not even like it was a truck, and I didn't see any kids in the back, so thank you very much. But in the truck next to me, like rolled up windows, like very high ride truck, the here comes like, you're welcome. And I hear like the low mumble of like tr someone trying to rap it. I mean, it was crazy to hear how people like it and love our film. And it's, it warms my heart because these are my family members, you know? Everyone on my island is, is my family and the fact that that they love it and that they appreciate a film inspired by them, that's all you can ask for. You um, look really poised at the Oscars given like, the audience size. It's like every celebrity you probably ever wanted to meet staring at Thank you. Thank you. Um, can, can you talk me through, like, how did you stay so calm and during such like a big mm. moment? I don't know how I would have done it. Mm. And probably more specifically, you know, how did you, what, were you, what was going through your head when that black hit you in the face? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, I would like to see that I'm a good actress because I was like so nervous. I was digesting my butterflies and I was, uh, you can ask the, my amazing dancers who were with me backstage, I was like taking like calming yoga breaths like the entire time and I was like, no, 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 wait, I just need this time, I'm sorry, I don't want to be rude, just like let me breathe. I don't have enough energy to like talk right now, I just need to breathe. And I was so nervous. Yes, Meryl Streep was in like the front row. My heart almost leapt out of my like chest and fell into her lap. She was close enough for that to happen. It was ridiculous. Um, and yes, when I got hit back of the head with my own dancer's flag. Funny story. Um, and that happened the day before in dress rehearsals, and it was like just a little tap. It was significantly less than what happened the night of the Oscars. And then we got together backstage, and we were like, that was great. And I was like, okay, hate to be a worry board, but I did get like a little, you know, tap. And then I had to be checked out by EMTs, and we all laughed about it afterwards, the dancers and the choreographer and I, and I was like, okay, just make sure it doesn't happen tomorrow. And then it happened the next day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a good little to remind me that this isn't a dream. We're actually at the Oscars. Um, yeah, I was affectionately rubbing my little like lump on the back of my head for the next few days. Um, tell us a little bit more about your family, the size, and and mm. where you grow. Where you know the size of the high school and your classmates, and and are you going to return to that life? Or uh, here, New York is coming in the picture here soon. Yeah. So. Uh, my family size. And a big family. I'm Puerto Rican, so Puerto Rican Portuguese. A lot of like people who talk fast over there and use a lot of hand motions. And then on the other side, my mom's side, I'm a Hawaiian and I have like some more Portuguese. Yeah, I evened out with Portuguese. Just I have a lot of hand motions clearly. Uh, yeah, I love my family. The fact that they've supported me from my home, my island, I'm hundreds of miles away and I still get FaceTime calls and I still get heart emojis and they comment on my Instagram and I'm like, auntie, please stop commenting on my Instagram and Facebook photos. But she's so proud and the rest of my family is as well and my friends as well. Um, school, I love my school and I go back every, I mean, every time I head back home, I head to school. That's 
something that goes hand in hand so that I can see my friends and that I can spend time with the library. I can talk to my counselors and my other teachers. And it's, I think, finding that balance between, like I said, my career and, and schooling, that it it's balancing itself out really nicely because I'm still getting my education. I'm in trig right now. I am, you know, in these advanced <laughs> classes <laughs> while still ba balancing everything else in my life, which is teaching me life skills. I'm, I'm appreciative of it. My mom is making sure that I do homework as well as chores, as well as this career. And the life, my life is, is still well-rounded because of her and because of my friends and all of these things. So it's a process and I still have a lot more to learn and a lot more to grow, but it's working itself out. Where do you see yourself in five years? In five years, I will be 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Uh, I'll be 21. I'll be in college. I will maybe drive. Who knows at this point? I'm not. I don't. I'm not driving yet. So, I mean, what's the rush? I'm just kidding. Yeah, 21 would be a good age to get my license. Uh, I should be driving. I should be in college. I will be pursuing my career in acting and or singing and or Broadway and or all of that fun stuff. Um, and I actually hope to get my law degree at the same time. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm crazy. Yeah. Last question. Ooh. Are you able at all to comment about Drama High? Not much. Okay. okay. One more? Uh, well, it's a little early, but have you thought about what colleges you kind of want to apply to? Yeah, um, USC, UCLA, UC Berkeley, kind of in that California area, or Juilliard, like, shoot up. Uh, but it's close enough to home, California, where it's, it's just a short uh, plane ride back home to Hawaii, uh, and it's warm enough. But at the same time, like, I like boots and coats and stuff like that. So then, I don't know, maybe Juilliard, because New York and scarves and all that fun stuff. For what it's worth, Cal, as a Cal, Cal grad, ah. it has a really good MCV program. Now, if you're a self-honor, um, it's well mm -hmm. Just saying. Oh. We need good graduates that we can just put on our Thank alumni. You. Okay, I've got a quote from John that I want to ask you oh. about, and also I'll read you the quote, then I want you to respond to each little <laughs> aspect real quick. Oh, no. Uh, he said basically... Wait, is this John Lasseter? No. Or John Lasker. Okay. John Lasker. Uh, <clears throat> basically, you are Moana in so many ways, including your spirit of mischief, <laughs> Okay. your intelligence, Thank you. your courage, and your empathy. So I'd like an example from you of your spirit of mischief. Tell me something, something that you did uh, to one of the cast members or uh, a friend, some, some, uh, something that shows your spirit of mischief. Spirit of mischief, thanks, John. Um, spirit of mischief. Uh, well, when we were in our first recording, like not, it wasn't even a recording session, it was kind of my callback in which I got flown up to LA. That's when I got to meet Ron and John and um, Osnat. We were all together in the room um, and they gave me a wrong line. So they, it, it was in front of me, but then they said, oh, we'll do this one. I don't know who wrote that. Um, and the line was like, you're not inspiring confidence. And I was like, okay, right now, guys, do you, are you sure you know what you're doing? Because this is not inspiring confidence. And it was a play on the line. And then they all laughed. And I was like, is that too much? Because I haven't gotten the role yet. And I'm like legitimately <laughs> joking with the directors and the producer. And I'm probably going to get kicked off this project because I'm being really rude. So it's mischief. But it's a lot of the times like, am I? Is that too much? Question mark. I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. Your intelligence? Um, I... Kathleen Trigg. <laughs> Trig, trigonometry, uh, chemistry. I am a big fan of microbiology, for s like cellular biology. I love that. Um, I was I was actually working on my own project of figuring out how we could use our natural algae in our oceans to create a more protective and a better sunblock for us because algae is able to. Uh, refract as well as um, take in sunlight and UVA, UVB, UVC rays with that gives it its beautiful green or bright vibrant colors without dying and actually flourishing in that. So 
putting that on our skin is a lot better for us as well as a lot better for the environment because the current sunscreens that we're using actually creates a film on our oceans and pollutes it and clogs up our coral reefs and all of this bad stuff. So <clears throat> in simple terms, I was just trying to find a really good sunscreen. <laughs> yeah. And your empathy. Um, it, it's, hard to t it's hard to talk about these traits about yourself. Uh, empathy. I'd like to say I'm a nice person. Um, I uh, I went to Samoa with the with the directors and the producer, um, and we got to really connect to the to one of the places that inspired our film, and that was something that was really very special because you got to see the people, and so we spent a lot of time giving back to the community. So we went to different events. We were at a, a cultural ava ceremony and I mean I don't know if that's necessarily empathy but I'm I'm very grateful for everything that's happened um, for the different journeys that I've been on for the many individuals that I've been able to meet for being able to travel to San Francisco and even to Los Angeles and to work with some of the most amazing directors in the entire planet and I can say that I did this before I turned 17 um, I have so much more to learn, so much more to grow, uh, but I will be forever grateful for where I've started off um, with Disney. Thank you very much. Thank you.